today with you? Uh, no, he's down the street though. But he will be here or no? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I gotta look this right away. Yeah. 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 I'm full of dwelling. They're bigger than the guy they're showing exactly was there before. They're going to have to hire an environmental person. They can't have my heart. My heart is not an environmental person. So, what do you think happened? Hey. Hey, guys. So, Hey, what? I got that from the CPA. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Riding by your mom's house. Go so, stop and look at those. Don't sign some. There's a Scott this year right now. I got to talk before people get it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm looking at this plan here. Yeah. And the total dwelling for 56 River Drive. That's the. Uh, yeah. There's a bigger bigger footprint than the trailer and deck that was there before. See? Yeah. The thing is, they bigger. And the problem is, they're having my heart do this. They need to hire somebody like England Environmental mm -hmm. yep. to do all the permitting. The answer to questions for DEP yeah. as far as riverfront, the replication. What's the, what's the other one? And rough it out with you. Well, I have to look at the previous one that was approved, but what they're proposing is bigger than what's there now. Well, sir, yeah. And what's it to come to taking the shed out? They're supposed to take the shed out, allegedly. Okay, they got it marked off. Well, so if they take the shed out in the trailer, it'll probably be fine then. They are supposed to take the shed out. Okay. That's what that's what we were told okay. when we did the site visit. Okay. Is this, okay, so that's what I'm gonna ask me. It's further back. Looks like the looks like the square footage is gonna be less. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's now fine. now, yeah. Okay, now I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The problem is they're not hiring an environmental person to present this to you. No. They're having a very hard job. He doesn't know the wetlands. He just wants to buy about, you know, what's required for And hey, we're not supposed to tell people what to do. That's not our job. No. Oh, this is that girl. He's, he, he's going to come in. Same thing with him. Yeah. He needs to go hire. I, so I, he says, I told him he's not going to get a, anything from us tonight. He's not going to get a decision or anything. I said, he's going to take my time. agenda tonight. He's going to come in. He wants to come in later. Yeah. Other business category. What else you got? So the agenda tonight, we got this. We got Dalvin, the Ideal Moors, and we got the Hawkins Academy, the playing fields. Mm -hmm. So, is this the guy? Is this the guy that's across from? Uh, Rocky Hill Road. Rocky Hill Road on Rocky Hill Road. Is this the new house that's being yeah. built? Yeah. 
Mm. He's the guy that told us he's not going to be above the level of the road. Ocean. Yeah, well, he's five feet above the road. You're going to understand he's an opportunist. Oh, God. He's yeah. going to keep buying properties, building houses, and selling them to make money. Yeah. It's not like it's his own personal house. So he's going really? to do whatever he wants to get what he wants. I can't believe they've got a house in there. <laughs> I, I, I still can't figure out how they got a house in there. That's, uh, that's the only place you can put a house. On that parcel. On that whole woods. On the, on yeah. the, on the, on the right hand side, on the right, as you're heading towards, mm-hmm. as I'm going home, on the right hand yeah. side. Yeah. That's the only, and then he's the guy that told us right to our face, well, oh, it's not going to be, it's only going to be at the level of the road. I'm telling you, I know he's, he's, yeah. It's like a Jeff Nash. How you doing? <laughs> I don't want this job. Yeah, no kidding. Don't do that email. I need that. So the actual hair is endangered species or whatever. It's so wild, like a fine leaf. <clears throat> There's a new letter from the second blush part of it. According to Mary Thayer, if I want to be continued to be a representative to the TPA, from a long time to time, be drunk. Need a letter saying you guys should be on the one more year. The message. Yeah. I'm just letting you know. I think I think she made a mistake. Well, yeah. No. Yeah. I think I think she made a mistake. I think Jessica made a mistake. Yeah. I can remember my son typing on the machine. Yeah. Give me a letter. Give me and making making an extra copy. And <clears throat> I had the CPA and the Concom in the same time frame. Now she says no, so I'm not going to say nothing. Oh, so so you are leaving a year early though from CPA. Well, according to Jessica, I am. Is that what you want to do? I don't know. Do I do I want to do that? Do you guys trust me to be a no, representative no, from no, CPA no, I on the, <laughs> as to represent the Concom? Because I'm gonna need a letter from from the this board. No, I don't think I've only done this for 61 years. I want someone to to 80. No kidding. No kidding. Thank you. Tim, these these uh right here. these calculations here, this letter from Marjorie Southwark or Conica, was this forwarded to the DEP? Uh yeah. I don't know. Uh we'll have to find out when uh, uh Greer shows up. So they don't really have anybody with an environmental background mm-hmm. representing this mm-hmm. permit too, man. Except for you. We get it. That's correct. Get together finally. So we should really be hiring somebody like we the environmental somebody in the chip. That's the time to do it. Because they know the we we aren't experts on this. We don't have that expertise. Well, I, I hope they answer the questions for DEP. So so what I hope is that what I did was it took him out. I showed all the calculations. It, it's in exhibit four. Hopefully you will have that. If not, we'll we'll give it to you. Okay, so, so we took what was existing. Okay, and showed that the difference was so. Um, basically, the the new house mimics the house that they were going to build, almost identical to square footage. Okay, but we'll go through it. I mean, it's pretty when you look at it and see what we're doing. We're actually it's much much better than what was there. Do we need an end bill for plan? 
We asked Shiloh if she wanted us to send anything before the meeting. She said, bring it to the meeting. Yeah. She's not here anymore. She's not here anymore. She responded to the email. <laughs> well, I think she's trying to help her. I'm <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So, okay. has this been submitted to the DEP yet? So, so Shiloh said we Shiloh said the, the questions from the DEP were to were to, to to this board. So she said we didn't have to submit anything back to the DEP. Thank you. Did you give the presentation, sir? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Does he have that? The seeing being at 6 30 p.m. on February 24th, Tuesday, 2023. I'll open up the Hadley Conservation Commission meeting hearings. First on the agenda is request for determination of applicability. 87 Rocky Hill Road continued. Jason Galvin seeks to establish a half acre chicken and asparagus farm on his property at 87 Rocky Hill Road. Site visit is conducted 1116 by Charlotte Davis and Jason Galvin. Is Jason here tonight? Okay. I'll look for a motion to continue this hearing until March 14th. I move that we continue the hearing. Second. Okay. Any we'll discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we'll continue one more time. I'll try to reach out to see you Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda is a notice of intent 56 River Drive, 170 291. Marjorie Southworth seeks to construct a new residence on the lot in 2015, mm -hmm. file number 170-174, was approved with an order of conditions to consider the work, which was never conducted. The current proposed work exists on a smaller footprint and is further from the river. There's riverfront, floodplain, and NHESP, SP present on site. An RDA was filed and the hearing was held 1122 for that permit. After communication with DEP, a notice of intent has been recommended. 
the last one we did close out that RDA in previous order conditions. A notice of intent has been filed with DEP, comments have been issued, and the MISA determination has been received. So who would like to start tonight for that? If you want to go through the calculations, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, get, I just want to do the narrative. Let me go through the narrative. If you want to go through the calculations? We'll get more. Okay. So, um, so at the last meeting, we went through the um, the comments from the DEP and Shyla. I think the ones that Shyla had recommend had said that we should address were number six and number seven. Uh, number six is <clears throat> a narrative showing compliance with the riverfront redevelopment standards needs to be created and provided to the commission. Uh, total riverfront area on the parcel must be known as well as the existing graded area on the parcel. Information is needed to assist in calculating any required restoration and mitigation. Uh, so on the on the uh, performance standards, the narrative for the performance standards that I apologize we just submitted today, um, we broke it down by <clears throat> the performance standards for the bordering land subject to flooding uh, under C 310 CMR 10.57 subsection 5. Um, so that's that's on the all the all the proposed new construction is within bordering land subject to flooding. Uh, the first performance standard is that compensatory storage shall be provided for all flood storage volume that will be lost as a result of the proposed project uh, within the bordering land subject to flooding when in the opinion of the issuing authority said loss will cause an increase or will contribute incrementally to an increase in the horizontal extent and level of flood water, waters during the peak flows. Um, in the proposal, there's an, actually a net increase of storage on the site in, in the proposed plan because the existing shed will be removed and not replaced. And that's actually on the lowest part of the property. So there will be an increase in storage on the, on the property. Um, the second performance standards that work within bordering land subject to flooding shall not restrict flood flows so as to increase flood stage and velocity. Uh, the proposed work does not place any fill material that would encroach in the path of flood, flood flows. The new construction will be slightly further from the river, river than the existing structures and would be properly engineered to avoid damage. Um, <clears throat> the third the third performance standard is that work in the portion of bordering land so flooding found to be significant for the protection of wildlife habitat shall not impair its capacity to provide important wildlife habitat functions. Um, the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program of um, Massachusetts D the Division of Fisheries and Wildlife um, and with tracking number 0619296, determine that the project as currently proposed will not adversely affect the actual resource area habitat of state protected rare wildlife species. Therefore, it is our opinion that this project meets the state listed species performance standard for the issuance of an order of conditions. Um, the division further found that the project appears to be exempt from MESA review pursuant to 321 R10.14 provided that all work occurs within the existing paved slash lawn slash landscaped areas of the property. Uh, so the, the current proposal has no expansion of work beyond those existing developed areas. And some of the developed, uh, some of the existing developed areas will be converted back to na native vegetation. Um, <clears throat> there's also the redevelopment of the riverfront area um, under 310 CMR 10.58 subsection five has performance standards. Uh, those performance standards are broken down as well with a short explanation for each one. Uh, the first one is a general improvement over existing conditions. Um, as you see in the calculations, the, the project will actually reduce the total degraded area on the site by, by quite a bit. The existing degraded area is 8,020 square feet and the proposed, um, the total proposed degraded area will, will go all the way down to 2,888 square feet. Uh, so that's a of the total riverfront area currently 31.73 percent is degraded and after the project only 11.43 would be degraded at that point so there's a pretty significant decrease in degraded conditions um, the stormwater management should be provided per DEP standards uh, the project is exempt from DEP stormwater management standards as there'll be no point source discharge of stormwater. Okay, so where are you reading all this from right now? Something we have in front of uh, that, this, That's in the, in the narrative. Is it the, uh, this year? Yeah, two, on page two. Page two. Okay. That, I'm on the bottom there at the, okay. the redevelopment one. Um, the, work, uh, the third one is the work shall be no closer to the river than existing conditions. The proposed house will be um, further away from the 
mean annual high water mark than the existing trailer. Uh, the degraded area closer to the river, which is currently gravel, will be converted to vegetative cover. Uh, work should be located away from the river. The buildings will be located as far from the river as possible under a, a, a pending variance or finding from the Hadley ZBA. Um, <clears throat> the area of work not to exceed the degraded area if over 10% or may alter up to 10%. The degraded area, as I said, is, is over 10%. So it's, it's actually 31, as I said, 31.73%. So the area of work for the proposed project, uh, the total riverfront area is 25,237 square feet, 8,020 uh, square feet or 31%. 31.73% of the total is currently degraded. Um, <clears throat> the total area of work will be 3,195 square feet which is 12.6% um, of the twelve point six percent of the riverfront area and does not exceed the degraded area. Um, so because the, the area of work uh, does, does not exceed the, um, the current degraded area, there's, there's no restoration or mitigation required, um, but the, there is gonna be 2,488 square feet of existing degraded area will be restored with topsoil and native vegetative cover as shown on the plan. Um, as, as I said, for the mitigation portion, there's the area of proposed work is less than the degraded area, so there's no required mitigation. Um, the last performance standard is continu continued condition prohibiting further alteration or of the restoration or mitigation area. So uh, we would expect the board to, to issue a, a condition, a continuing condition to protect the areas that are restored as part of the project. So how do we come up with all these numbers? Um, I, I worked with Randy Eisen on this, and we used Chuck Dachi's plan before. So what are the differences? The house and the deck pretty much mimic the square footage of what was a proposed dwelling on the site, OK? Um, what you see in red is what the major change is from what Chuck Dachi did and what we're proposing. So they were going to rebuild this big, the shed, make it bigger. There was compensatory storage because of that. There was a larger driveway. We're making the driveway a lot smaller. We're, we're removing the shed in its entirety. We're replicating to um, proper um, riverfront landscaping there. All the other numbers with regard to uh, replication are more or, less, more or less the same what was on the old proposed uh, drawing, okay? So we're taking out a huge swath of the existing uh, drive that went, there was a U-circle drive. All that's being taken out. All that's being replicated back to um, natives. Uh, plants and stuff. So so what we're doing is, is much better than what was approved previously. Um, so it, it, it's, a, it's a much better site than what was approved. And, and from what's there. I'm sorry. And from what's currently there. And what's certainly what's currently there. So is the house a slab on green or is it? The, the new proposed house, mm -hmm. it will be on a um, frost wall system. There is no, no uh, basement in there. Okay. The water can flow in, the water can flow out. You're going to put flood vents in there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's not going to be anything down there, other than you want you need space if you need to do some type of maintenance down there. But it's it's not for storage. It's not for anything other than trying to get to you any uh, piping or anything that's down there. Utilities are all above flood stake. They um, there won't be. A, a breaker box down there. There won't be any type of mechanicals, the hot water system, all that's above. And it's actually uh, within the, above the um, existing, or the, the new um, bathroom that's going to be there. So, 
All we did was took what Chuck Dodge did, went through the numbers, knew what had to be changed, modified it, showed those percentages, and made and uh, rewrote everything for your. <clears throat> what I would recommend is this all should be forwarded to the DEP as well. The plans, calculations, so they have that to see, so they can see those issues have been addressed. Um, I think it's I think it's permittable as it's presented. How the other board members feel about the comments? I'm sorry. Were you here in uh, mid eighty? Because this this parcel they had to climb into the the across the street is a pumping station. They had to climb into the eve the the. I don't know what you call it, but they had to climb in through the to uh, waterproof it. It's above the hundred year flood elevation. Eighty eighty four was the last major flood. Right. Of, so of this flood. is this is going to flood again. If it, it it shouldn't have flooded in eighty four. Well, it's going to be real close. It's that didn't, be that didn't flood down. I don't think so. <coughs> that didn't flood. It, it, flood, it flooded down toward Klamaski's where Klamaski they broke yeah. the flood, right, but that it, comes in. That they were flooded. I'd be flooded. Yeah. Know? Do you, you want to flood it? My <clears throat> my, uh, my thoughts are we could potentially close the hearing. I don't want to order uh, issue order conditions until I have more time to digest this and go back to the previous plans mm -hmm. and pull out of that because we don't have any clerical staff right now right. to do any of this. Okay. So I would go back and look at some of the order conditions from the previous project. That would apply to this. So I could have put something together. And this came at last minute for us. But I would make a uh, suggestion that we could continue, we could close the hearing, vote on it, subject to issuing order of conditions, which I would bring back at the next meeting on my March 14th for a vote. Sounds cool. cool. Is that reasonable? Yes. For you folks? Yeah. yeah. We just. No, I understand. Okay. I think if the DEP sees these plans and sees this, it's very likely they're going to appeal our decision. Seeing the due diligence has been done. That's what I would recommend. You want to agree? Sure. Okay. So <clears throat> I want to make a motion to, uh, I'm looking for a motion to close the hearing unless there's any further comments. Mm -hmm. Motion? Yeah, I'll make it. The board makes a motion. Second. Second. Vote. Ray, yeah. any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous? Okay. So, I'd like a motion that we go with close the hearing, that I would like to go forward with putting together some order conditions that I will bring forward on March 14th for a final vote. I don't mm -hmm. think there's going to be anything out of the ordinary. It's just going to be a bunch of boilerplate off the pullout yeah. and anything else like that. Um, I can see some definite improvements here. I can understand this part here. That's an improvement. Pulling it back. Okay. So you guys don't want to turn around and make a U to get out of there. Isn't it easier? It's a small car. So it's just, just going to back out of the garage and turn around right there. So there's no no big U yeah. driveway. No. Yeah. The traffic isn't quite as bad as it is down towards the school system because people oh, can't rock it's, it's not bad at all in front of my shop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, compared to down by the school, though, I'm saying that's worse. I don't know about that, but that's 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 not our our, our issue with traffic. So, <laughs> so um, all those in favor of doing as I propose, if you I'll have a motion, yeah. like I said, I'll bring the conditions back on March 14th. Gordon makes a motion. Second by. I'll second. Edwin, any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So we're going to close the hearing. We're going to approve the project. We just have to put, I want to digest this a little bit. Right. Um, it seems all reasonable from what I can see. And then uh, it's your firm. Thank you very much. Okay. Do you have any uh, answers or will there be any paperwork back to the DDT? Although I'm sure they, they're going to, they're probably going to notify us when we okay. know or something. But in the meantime, right. 
I just want them to know that we're just not blindly issuing approving the project. You keep yeah. these goals and you show us how you're gonna meet the performance the owners. Yeah, I'll get it, I'll get it over back. Okay. Yeah. And then after that point, if they have an issue with that try to get the order condition, they can give us if they want. <laughs> That's your decision. Those are all our copies. These are all our copies, right? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The DEP previously approved the other one. This is, I think, an improvement over that, even. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, we don't have time to put together one. Okay. So we won't try anything tonight. But yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Rand. Okay, next on the agenda. South Maple Street Ideal Movers, file number 170-283. Ideal Movers has been in the process of building a new storage facility and due to a recent change in state regulations. A pump for drain is required to be installed for the building's elevator. Bucky Sparkle is representing the applicant and will be providing further detail on the proposed design for the system. Bucky, now, do we have, are we have? Yeah. Is, well, we don't have a screen. Oh, there's people on? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm here. I just don't see anything okay. Okay. <laughs> so have... I see how it's going to be. And I'm sure we're on Zoom tonight. Already. So go ahead, Bucky. Fill us in. All right. Thank you. Um, well, it's good to be back with the commission. The last time I was here was for this very same project for, for kind of usual reasons, working within a buffer zone. I Can I just ask, depending on how much background I would like to give, um, has the commission received a request like this before for an elevator or some discharge? No. Okay. Yeah, me neither. This is the first time I've run into it. Apparently, it's a relatively new uh, fire code requirement at the state level. And I've been talking. It's, coincidentally, I have a project in Hadley and Northampton that have the exact same situation going on. So I've, I've learned a bunch about this recently. Um, the, the gist of it, the state fire marshal has uh, established a requirement to have a sump or gravity drain discharge from the pit below an elevator. And when mm -hmm. every time there's a discharge, it will go to an oil water separator, which also is a grit separator. And then the discharge, when possible, would go to a sanitary sewer. That's the preferred location. In lieu of a sanitary sewer being available, which of course on South Maple Street, where we're at, we're on a septic system. Uh, without a gravity sewer, then the next option is to send it to a stormwater management system, which we are building as part of this site plan. Of course, all water that hits the ground ends up in the wetlands eventually. So if it's a, just a straight connection to a sanitary sewer, it's all done through the building department, easy peasy. If it goes to a stormwater management system, then, and these are the rules, the town has to approve it. You know, so then it becomes a question, well, who in the town would have, you know, issuing authority, approval authority here? So I've been talking to the building department and um, ended up speaking at length um, with uh, Dennis Phil, the plumbing and gas inspector. And he's very comfortable with the situation, but says that if the whole town has got to say yes, because this is has really there's no other option than to put it on the ground, um, then the CONCOM ought to be involved because there are wetlands on the property. And this makes good sense to me. Um, so what I'm requesting tonight is a, um, a letter or a memo that that states, um, assuming you agree, that the, the discharge from this sump to the stormwater management system is acceptable. Um, I'll, let me explain a little bit more about the system as I understand it. Um, the, an elevator sump is generally dry. The only reason there would be water in there is if there's a flood or there's a fire. Um, and, you know, in, in either case, there is a, a catastrophic amount of water uh, on site and or uh, coming out of the building. So 
you know, all of this water would be going into the wetlands anyway, um, usually to the storm management system first, because, you know, that's how the site's designed. Uh, so never, as long as this place doesn't build down or we don't have a flood that buries uh, this section of town, there's never going to be a discharge from this sump. Um, if there is a catastrophic failure of the hydraulic system in this um, elevator, that that's uh, one of the reasons for the oil water separator. So that fluid would not move downstream. Uh, so the environment would be protected in that regard. Uh, so if it's, you have an oil water separator, Doug. Or is it Bucky or Doug? You go by? Uh, it's, it's Bucky. Okay. Is that capacity sufficient to hold all the hydraulic fluids that the high, like elevator could hold, or is it, could it overflow? And uh, my conversation with the Otis elevator people, it, it would be sufficient. Uh, there's a, a minimum flow rate and a minimum size that is needed, um, and they they looked at the oil water separator and vetted it and said that that would that would contain it. I can I can get a, a memo from Otis as well if if that's something that um, the commission would like. Is this the only discharge that would be going into that oil water separator? Yes. 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 So it's uh, there's a sump pump in the pit. It would go to the oil water separator and then probably drain by gravity once we've pumped it up from the oil water separator into a catch basin. The catch basin has a sump as well, but um, you know it doesn't have that separation capability. It's more for grit, of course. I think I'd be the most concerned about a hydraulic failure and that the sump becoming overrun with oil and not so much. I The odds of a, a flood or a fire out there is going to be next to nil. I'm sure it's sprinkled the building, correct? I believe so. I, I'm, you know, I, I do stuff outside of the foundation on these jobs, so I don't have that specific answer. If there's a fire there, the water's going to be going everywhere as there's a fire department trying to put it out. Yes. Okay. So I would just be concerned about a hydraulic leak of the elevator and that all that fluid could be contained in the oil water separator. I think I'd be fine with everything else. Yeah. What happens to the oil after it's in the separator? Well, if they have a catastrophic failure of the hydraulic system, they'll have to obviously pump the oil out of the pump out. Yeah. They're getting it pumped out. He didn't say that. Are you gonna? I, are you gonna I, 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 you're right. I didn't say that. Um, but I, I'm going to concur. Uh, obviously, if there's a failure, they'll they'll know about it. The elevator won't be working. Uh, there's only one place for that fluid to go, and that's going to be into that sump system. So they'll they'll know about it. They'll know where that it's located. It will be accessible, and it will have to be removed by an authorized hauler. And and I'm not sure who that would be to tell you the truth. Again, I don't I don't get into these systems, um, but I can also no. verify who would handle that. If they didn't have a drain in the sump, isn't the sump large enough already to contain all the oil, hydraulic oil that ever happened, correct? It, the the Otis elevator people sure as heck feel this way. Um, mm -hmm. so, it's, so it's almost pointless. That, I don't know why they have to have a drain on it. <laughs> um, um, I, it... I, anyway, I've had a conversation with the Otis people. They they fully agree with you. They think this is redundant. The fire department never goes and pumps these things out. It's always the the elevator people gets called into these post disaster situations and and pumps out these pits. Um, but that's in the case of a fire or something along those lines. Uh, if it if there was a hydraulic line that breaks and it drains down the the pit would be big enough to hold it. Um, but I, I don't know about the sump. It's it's even lower than the the pit itself. The pit's five feet deep. I mean, there's there's no way there's that much fluid volume in the the hydraulic system. Uh, but I, I, I don't pit, have a is, volume. The pit is that the sump? I mean, what's different here? I'm, I'm... Well, there is um, a pit which would be the same dimension as the entire elevator shaft, just extends five feet below the bottom floor. And then at the bottom of the pit is another depression, uh, which is, that's what they're calling the sump. So into that would either go, if there's uh, a yeah, gravity yeah, pipe, yeah. if we could, we can't. So we put a, a pump, just like you would have a sump pump in a basement. It's a, it's a small, it's small bit, container. Yeah, I, 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 and I had the same concerns you did. 
Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's so that was my own okay. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. No, good. <laughs> so I'm, I'm fine with what you're proposing, the board member. How's the rest of the board members feel? I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. That's, that's fine. Well, this isn't actually a, 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 a notice of intent. This is just an inquiry tonight, correct? Yes, this is not a DEP requirement. It's uh, only because the Dennis Phil yeah. said yeah. check in with the CONCOM. Yeah. Yeah, the agenda reference the file number. So I think uh, everyone's here is in agreement mm -hmm. that you can proceed as you want, as you were proposing to do. Mm -hmm. And we're fine with it. Um, would you be able to issue a, a one sentence memo along that line so I can pass it on to the plumbing inspector? Make it easier. You put something together, I'll sign as a chairperson. I don't have any clerical support that. that right? I will also. Okay. With with that, I will also verify with Otis the hydraulic fluid volume because I now want to make sure that you know if it's a fifty gallons of fluid and a ten gallon sump or um, oil water separator, that's a problem. So I want to make sure that a hundred percent of that capacity is is able to be segued and set aside. So I'll check that out. You think I, you know, a little can they go deep there? Even if they can exceed it, just be safe. But yes, do that. Okay. Yeah, that's it's very easy. So I'll make sure that happens. Okay, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time, and uh, I'll get that memo over to you after I hear back from the elevator people. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great night. Okay, next on the agenda, you know, it's been sent. Hopkins Academy Athletic Fields Phase Two. Chris Desjardin, not sure if it's on it, right? <laughs> Representing. Represented by Berkshire Design Group, seeks to add two ball fields to two multi-sport fields, as well as associated fencing, safety netting, scoreboards, extension of existing paved walking path, parking lot reconfiguration, concrete path, future concession stand, athletic field, sub-drainage system, and storm water management. BMP is all within the 100-year floodplain. Is there somebody here to represent this tonight? Yes, uh, hello, folks. Uh, this is Doug Searle with uh, Berkshire Design Group here for this project. Good. Um, I'm going to share my screen here uh, in order to give a brief presentation uh, for not, this. It's not going to work very well because we, we're looking at a laptop about 15 feet away from our table. Got it's not it. on a big screen. It should be on a big screen so we can all watch it, but we can't. Got it. Uh, so let me uh, see if I can change my uh, tune here uh, for this. Oh, well, let me ask you something real quick because we're we're uh, we don't have our support staff anymore. Okay, please do. Now, has, has a file never been issued for this? I'm sorry. Could you repeat that question? The file never been issued for this project. Uh, yes, it has been. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a copy of the letter from the DEP, do we? I don't see it here. That is a good question. Uh, there, there were three comments that were issued from, uh, from Mark uh, Stimson on this. What, what's the date of that letter you have? Uh, it's January 23rd, 2023. I don't have a copy of it here anyways I can see. Let me look around a little bit. Okay. Like the nice to have that. So we're a little handicapped here tonight. That's all right. So I don't know why we don't have this with the folder. That's the folder right there, right? Yeah. We're at the That's the same picture. Why don't you go back to the office? We'll go offline. Maybe an email. Okay, so what are the concerns that the uh, Mark Stinson brought up? Uh, so he brought up 
uh three questions uh the first question that he asks uh i guess to uh, to us these seem um so slightly uh slightly obscure but uh um uh, uh the first question was does the town or school department have the equipment necessary to maintain the storm scepter unit uh so a storm scepter unit uh is proposed in in one location uh and uh, uh, I um, I do not know uh, if the town of Hadley has uh, this equipment, uh, but uh, for, it's my understanding that if you know a municipality doesn't have this, that 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 you know there are third party private parties that can be hired to outsource to do uh, the annual cleaning of of storm scepters. So that is possible to do. I do not know if the school itself or the town has. Uh, specific equipment uh, for a storm scepter, but it storm scepter doesn't seem abnormal. To check with the DPW. Um, yes, I can certainly I can certainly uh, check with them about that. Okay. And the second question uh, is that subsurface tanks typically require um, a UIC registration, which is underground uh, injection. Uh, certification registration um, at and there's a particular location that that uh, gives uh, a, a link to that. Uh, so there's one area of this site where, in order to get the drainage, proposed um, stormwater captured stormwater management to work, uh, that in the northwest corner. Sorry, yeah, the northwest corner of the site. Uh, there's a, a small area of a su subsurface detention system uh, using a product called R tanks. It's a, about a, a a foot in depth uh, uh, underneath the underneath the uh, surface, and uh, it is there to you know act as a filtration of surface runoff that would that would be coming from from the site. In one area that we were having a hard time uh, getting to drain because the site is so flat or so close to flat um, in order to, to uh, uh, get that to work. We were proposing that um, uh, in, in that one area. And so what Mark is referring to is for that R tank, uh, it's not something that we have uh, done on other projects. This is the first time we, you know, this is, this has kind of been put in our direction. And as uh, discussing this with the uh, engineers uh, in our office at, at, at BEG uh, that uh, it's there's it's a little bit ambiguous whether our tanks that are catching uh, subsurface infiltration uh, are are considered um, underground injection um, uh, systems, but regardless, it's something that we could certainly look into uh, if the commission is interested in, in having that done. Is there a third question? Is that, is that that's all the second one? Mark's concern? Uh, is there a third one? That's, that, that's question number two, and there's one third question. Uh, the third question is uh, uh, it stated a table simply showing uh, cut and fill volumes at each incremental elevation should be submitted. See attached example from the hydrology handbook. Um, and uh, they, what we had done was uh, analyze the existing condition uh, from the most recent uh, survey that was the as-built drawing um, that was reviewed at the previous uh, hearing when we were talking about the first phase one uh, NOI to get the certificate of compliance. Uh, we looked at that, uh, you know, considered that the existing condition and uh, then did our designs uh, for, you know, proposed conditions between those two. And looking at the two, we then uh, made our calculations uh, that were submitted in uh, the application. Uh, there's a table in there that compares uh, existing to proposed. Um, and, uh, but we did not make a, a three-dimensional uh, surface of this entire site to analyze uh, specifically the, the cut fill volumes of this. So we could do that uh, additionally for this, uh, but did not, um, we 
analyzed uh, our proposed contours and, and what the existing uh, uh, contours, the existing topography was in order to generate uh, the um, uh, volumes shown in our table um, for compensatory storage. I'll, my recommendation is if you answer all the questions that Mark brings up in his transmittal letter with the file number, I think the rest of the board will be fine with it. You just need to uh, do as he wishes and submit it to them in Springfield. Okay. All right. And do and do what you said you're going to do. <laughs> so sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't. Are there we, any uh, questions broadly about the project itself? No. This is just an extension of what you've already done out there. I don't need to dig into these plans and look at all the fine nitty gritty right. detail. You submit it to Springfield. They've looked at it. Come back with a transmittal letter, which is probably in the office, maybe in the email, just not with the file because, like I said, we're lacking our normal clerical staff and support group. Yeah. So as long as you answer the questions the DEP is, has concerns with in a sufficient manner that they're happy with, I think the rest of us on the board are going to be fine with Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Because we're not going to be peer reviewers of this project. That's not our role as CONCOM members. Okay, uh, we'll respond to uh, Mark's questions and send that back to him uh, uh, and then uh, bring that back to you guys. And and I guess we should do that for, try to do that by the next hearing. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna look for a motion to continue this to March 14th at 6.30, same location. I'll make it. We have a motion to continue the hearing, second by Edwin, any further discussion? All those in favor. Uh, so you take care of those items on the agenda in a timely fashion so Mark can respond back if he has any further concerns, and then we can probably go ahead and close the hearing and, and uh, get you going. Okay, great. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. We'll see what we're we'll making right? yeah. Okay. March it to our agenda. Yeah. Uh, the business interviews for agent position held on Friday, February 10th. So applicants receive, hopefully, so we'll be able to step in soon. Charlie has been involved in that process. Right. Carolyn Brennan. Yep. And uh, she's been very helpful. Good to be with the new people. And hopefully we'll have somebody back on board shortly to help us out. Good. So I'm going to ask, uh, I'll, I'll keep the other few things off to the end. Bill's updates minutes, which is probably continue those. But we'll have you come forward now. Hey, Did you sign into the uh, tennis sheet? Oh, sure. Okay. Get uh, the tennis sheet here. The is going around. With you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you can briefly describe, explain what you're proposing to do. Um, so I think it's going to come back down to you're still going to have to get a hold of somebody to do a permit. Okay. Um, okay, that was intent. We're yeah. not environmental experts. We're just a board that works on the behalf of Springfield. Okay, uh, so it's basically uh, it's an extension of what Family Golf Center already had. Uh, they had a paintball shooting gallery where they would you would shoot at little. Um, so why don't you, I like mean, Ray and I are sort of know what's going on. Yeah. But why don't you explain? No, I, I have no idea. Edwin, okay. Gordon, and Steve have no idea what you're proposing to do. Um, so if you, get, if, if you want to take, take a look at the pictures, this is a piece of property that's. Sitting. Why don't you come around and show that to the board members here? We can't do it on the screen, unfortunately. Yeah. There's no way of projecting it. But you can so, explain these two. Steve, what's coming over? Where is that? Like, yeah, come on over behind me. Where where is the be, behind the it's behind the structure? Show show show, show okay. the plan with the piece of property shown on. Do you have the uh, outline of the property? The uh, assessor's map that you showed me, so they get a better idea. Well, you brought that's that. this is the drive-in theater. This former drive-in theater. Is that where the drive-in theater was? Right, right there. It, it was, was close to there. It was very. This will be. Yeah. This will show you where it is. No, this, this, yeah. look at this. Okay. Bring that on the problem. It's not even close to the driving field. You can't? No. no. Okay. Oh, that's behind the you bet the vet right. rats at the yeah. driving So why don't you explain to these I, I know where it's already. Yeah. I'm gonna oversee show where the parcel is located relative yeah. to other other you know, landmarks. Okay, so this is the USGS map. Yep. This is um 
the property in question, this landlocked piece. But show where the golf center is. Golf center is this and over. Lowe's is basically right in here. Yeah. So I have it's a landlocked piece of property right there. Mm -hmm. Right. It's an independent stream that goes through that they want to cross. And that's where we they get the problems. That would be right here. We got um, that topo line. Mm -hmm. um, so here is kind of a broad view of this is Lowe's. Right. This is the driveway to the golf center. Right. And then this is the landlocked piece. Um, the back portion of it is clearly wetland. And then this portion of it is hayed agriculturally. There is an intermittent stream right here that flows through the golf center. And so it only it, it's a ditch. Yeah. It's a ditch. It puts considered a stream. It's a wetland. Yeah, I get it. Um, so what he uh, was good. looking to do was um, uh, he's talking with the golf people, utilize their parking area. And um, and then create like a, a just a walking path, which is exempt under the Wetland Protection Act. Um, if it's 30 inches or less um, in a buffer zone or riverfront area that for private use. So that is a question um, that we were thrown around. And he was going to do this under um, like a club, like a membership club that is qualifies under that private status. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the exemption is for a walk, um, unpaved walkway um, in a buffer zone um, for private use. And it doesn't specifically say that it can be over a bridge, like a, a walkway over a bridge. So that's why we wanted to just come in front of the commission informally, um, get your take, maybe take on that. Um, but so to continue on, they would, he would walk across this intermittent stream into the, the field. And this is his, his already existing um, netting, netting for the golf course. Yeah, it is the stream. This is where we want to cross it. Right. This is the walk path that we get to that. So uh, are you, I think what probably the best thing we could do here is we could actually go out there and yeah, absolutely. walk. Yeah. These yeah. pictures are helpful, but yeah, you get a better sense of sure going off here. Right. I do have a video on me too that I just walked today just to show that but if, if that's that's right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, it um, helps to, to see it in person. Yeah. Um so, so this this stream is only it's it's it there's water in it now. Mm -hmm. This is from today. Yes. Yeah. This is this is from today because there's water in it now. In a normally normal year is there water in that ditch. I and at the, so last year when I was on the property, it was it was like muddy. It wasn't it wasn't it was dry, muddy. but it was, there was no water. Right, right. That whole water. yeah, it's it's draining all that area. It's always going to have water. Yeah, yeah. And that last year was an extreme dry. Yeah. So, yep. um, <laughs> we we can set up probably. We have some good weather coming the next few days. Right, we'll get out there quick. Yep. Look at it. Yeah, I still think you're going to have to go through. Uh, we can't tell you what current process to go through because you're going to be doing work in the wetlands. Mm -hmm. so if you want to put a bridge. Um, um, cross about, that's it's about ten feet wide. It uh, it's, yeah, yeah. And how you how you post it, how you suspend it, mm -hmm. how you impact the wetlands. Sure. And that's not something we can tell you how to do. You have to present that in a plan, send it to Springfield. And that's the was that the question if it was um, because if it was under thirty six inches thirty it, inches so the exemption <clears throat> um, we just wanted to to check base with you um, to see if you thought that it would qualify under the exemption because the exemption is for walkways. Uh, Unfortunately, walkways. we're not experts in that field. The one who probably could have helped us with this is no longer would have been shot. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and 
excuse me. Course, no, right? it's just a case where um, they're actively trying to find a replacement. Yep. Depending on how quick you want to move on this thing, you know, we may have somebody in a month or two that can come up to speed and give us more guidance or give you some better direction than we can give you. We just can't give you the direction. What about the going to a, um 35 but no disturb zone? We heavily enforce that. Hmm? We enforce that. That's for that's for putting uh for building, correct? That's for no building, parking lot, yeah. any activity. We don't allow anything in the 35 foot zone. And so what about um that's, this that, that's, bridge to access? You're in that 35. That's what I'm getting at. You're, so would that not be allowed then? As we as tonight, as we're looking at looking at you right now, we would say no. Yeah. But it might be if you do it. it right see, you don't have you don't have an agricultural exemption. Right. You you have a landlocked piece of land. It's one thing if you're accessing upland on a legal lot to get to do do something. So, so can I stop you real quick? This part of the land, all of this is actually on the family golf center portion of it. So this is all um in in work and use right now it's it's a it's a running um business so he and he has a rickety old um bridge if you want to call it further upstream so the question is could we put that 30 if, you know that's that would be our question is it, there's one that's already on there it's rickety we're talking about one that's it's also about eight feet wide and then 10 feet long that goes across. This one would be 30 inches and 10 feet. And the the footings, so to speak, for the bridge would be placed on the ground. They're not going to be something like concrete that's poured in place. Um, it's it's just for foot traffic. You just need something that's going to span that distance to support the load. Right. right. They're not put into the actual water itself. Right. You know, a pad on one side, pad on the right. other. I don't know what you would do for micro lambs or what you would come up with for design. Yep. I, I don't. It's a, it's a walking path. You know. Because I, the problem here is I'm, I, I'm in the process of picking up the property and I'm in the process of, of negotiating with Rick Holbrook. So it's he's okay with this as long as he doesn't get this, as long as his business doesn't get disturbed. And this is like this is the only spot that it could do it. So and that's why I didn't want to go and use his bridge because he was concerned about I the golf. What you're gonna have to do is you can think we'll walk it and we can discuss it, mm -hmm. maybe even come up with some type of sketch plan where you can bridge that water gap and keep the, the you know concrete pads sufficiently. You know, we could probably allow them the 35 foot zones for crossing. Because is it the culvert there? There's no culverts. There used to be. There might have been because there's in the back, there's like a big old culvert pipe that might have been in there at one point. So, but there's nothing. Okay, they're, they're, they're hanging. Now, how do you get into the hayfield now? He's going over his bridge. Okay. So, it depends on how much the board wants to make a project out of this. Yeah, you can't use his bridge. He doesn't. That's the pro So this almost shows it. It's if you go further down here, the bridge is further down, but these nets actually protect from the golf balls that are being launched. Yeah. And he and where that um, bridge is, he's got a skirt that he can like pull back and go across it. He doesn't want any golf balls hitting yeah. anybody. He doesn't, he doesn't want, want people walking. Ex there. Exactly that, and he's and that was his specific thing. Was listen, if if you can do this without disturbing me, and this would be one way of doing that, then he's he, he's, you know, um, he's good. With it. If we if we can find a way to build a thirty six inch wide, mm -hmm. yeah, I I can't be a problem. Personally. So the other question would be then, uh, but, uh, and like like Gary said, you see it. That's it. It just it just him. This would be a mock up of what it would be. So I'm uh, the paintballing with the paint. right. They're blow up um like tents. No, they're almost it, it's you know those punch <laughs> the things that you used to punch or used yeah. to up? They're basically weighted blow up tents. Yeah. 
And then there's some, this guy's using wire roll, old wire rolls. And but you know, you can use for paintball, you can use for, or are you going to use for paintball? paintball. That's because the, that's the other project that I brought to you, because of the wetland problem, it was going to be a major concern that, and we both talked about it and we said, this is this is the this was the other uh, the, the secondary part of that for uh, original plan. The other portion of this is that that whole field um, has well the majority of that field has hydric soils in it. The vegetation is a mixture of grass like perennial ryegrass and goldenrods, which I'm not sure which kinds, um, and some sedges. Um, but there are no ruts in it. How are they mowing it if there's... What are they doing? Are they haying it? Are, hay bush, it. are they bush hogging it? No, they're haying it. Go out there and bailing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they don't, and, and my brother used to do it 30 years ago when, yeah. it, when it used to be owned by Seattle's. He was so this is turning more into a commercial option. Yeah. No, oh, so he, the, the, the yeah. commercial side of it is going to be on his property. I'm going to be leasing a, a spot from him. He's already had all the equipment has already been set up. It's already there. It's it, he stopped using it years and years and years ago. This portion of it would just be the property, and that's what we need to get to. And that's that's where it's. So this is going to be on the property you want to get to, right? This right. There's not going to be any. There's not going to be exchanging of money. There's not, this is just going to be a field where where, where people are going to be running around. It's going to be foot traffic. Running around, hiding behind those. There's no well, park, parking, no no vehicles, no right now. But now, what's going to happen in a couple of years uh, if if you sell the business? And how far is this going to be for wetlands? Right. It's about a seventy-five foot. Um, uh, I walked it out. It's approximately seventy-five foot to the corner of what I approximated. It's, <laughs> it's not flagged out there we're, yet. We're so. talking a lot of potential foot traffic. Yes. Yeah, it's, 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 <clears throat> a 36-inch wide bridge is not going to be cut because people are going to go back and forth both directions. Yeah, I know. So, and you're well, and you're talking about these are timed, so you get like an hour on the field, and you'll have 20, 25, 30 people at a time at max on one of these fields. So it's not like people are just going in and out of it. It's it's almost like a it would be so a they're right in and right out. And they're all correct. Right. Yeah. 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 We're gonna look at it. Take a walk. Yeah. 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 We gotta take a look at it and see what's going on. Yeah. yeah. No disrespect intended, but you know, if it's your, if if we see it, it's much better. Oh yeah. yeah. And sure. if there's a lot of like gray areas, you know, you have your your 35 foot no disturb zone. There's this exemption, but is it a, you know, a bridge? Is that considered a walkway? And um, that's why we just wanted to informally just yeah. come in front of you uh -huh. before submitting any. Um, this can get really expensive really quick for yeah. it to be shut down. That's that's kind of what I sort of want to get a good feel where. I, I don't feel good about it right now. I'm mm -hmm. showing you this. Uh, any specific? It's, it's turning into a commercial operation. You're going to have more, you're going to have a lot of shops. So it's going to definitely grow. I mean, you're talking a lot of college students that don't want to use that. <clears throat> yeah, that's the target audience, right? Uh, that wall, I mean, you can find guys my age paint wall. Yeah, <laughs> actually, no, Buddy Gold. I talked to him, him and his son go all the time. That's where we are. We're in the part of the park. <laughs> Um, where, where's the parking for all these like 25, 30 people at a time, plus the people that are coming in and changing? Like that's a lot of that's a lot of vehicles. These people have to get there. Yes, right. So and and that was one of his concerns also. So in that case, he does have he has I think I think before you even do this, have you tried running this by the planning board yet? I have this this is all preliminary. I, I wanted to get a good feel where this could be yeah. yes, and then step to the next step and step to the next step. I'll probably talk to the planning board too, see what your take is on this type of way to land situated country footage landlock. Right. You know, they're gonna have a lot of questions like we'll just bring up park is not our concern, but we worry about them overrunning into the, the wetland areas. Oh no, no. Oh so, if that, if for parking you're talking about? But the people that walk in it, I mean you gotta 
if you if you walk out there, you're going to see that this is not this is not a swamp. This is it's it's basically. It, I was just out there tonight, but you know, I can show you, you my video. Do, it's, you got to talk to the play board and see if you can even do what you want to do. Right. Because I think you're going to get some pushback. You know? The only thing that I do, um, what what would be the immediate uh, idea in your head about the pushback about, about the property and the wetlands? Is that you what, put it that? on a piece of landlocked land you don't have legal access to, and you're counting on both soils and property? It would be through a lease. Yeah, so you have to work out all those logistics. So right, that's what they're going to be looking at. Because they're not going to just give you. A, you know, you're going to have to show them how you're going to run this operation from the street in. So again, that, that that's what's actually in my benefit. The, the paintball was actually already, it's already been in that exact location. So what? And the equipment and everything, because it was, it basically was just a small, he, he tried it out as like a, just a, like a shooting at, a, look at like barns and stuff like that. There's like little things you could shoot at. It's still up, the, the whole thing is all, it's got all the netting and everything, it's still up there. But he just, it was just too small of a deal. This would bring, his deal into the position it should have been. No, we can, we can go out and take a look at the site and then, you know, yeah, where they want to cross, but, but yeah, um, you know, Joel Tabrani, yeah, we should ask him before you go to those boards to see what it by him. Mm -hmm. We'll tell you what he, what he thinks he's usually pretty accurate too. You know, he's just a good doctor, right? Yeah. Hey, what's the weather the next few days? What day is the good day? It's supposed to be pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, rain, rain, rain in a couple what, days. Which, which day is the rain day? I can't Thursday, Thursday, I think, right? Thursday, yeah. Thursday? Yeah. yeah. 80% chance of that. So we either get tomorrow or Friday to take a look at it. Right. Or we're going to have to be fresh term, boy. We can take a lot of two weeks when you can go tomorrow. I'm all game for tomorrow. What time's work for you guys? What time will we order? I'll be around home. Just call me up. Takes me two minutes to get there. I'm free anytime. Yeah. You want to just sit? What's, what's, the, what's the best time? What's the worst time for you guys? I, I don't know if you need even need to be there. I can just show up and show them the whole thing. Yeah, that's, that's, um, I, and I can be there in a 15 minute window. Okay. Well, I just shoot from 5 o'clock tomorrow. Is that too late? Could we make it a little earlier? Can we make it? Four o'clock, three o'clock, two o'clock in the noontime. I'm like, well, two, six in the morning. Do you want to go in the morning? It's good. It's good eight o'clock, Florida. I can't be. I'll be up at six in the morning, but I can't go. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Noontime's good. Go at noon. Noon time? Oh, noon time? Yeah. What do you yeah. want me to do? Noon? Where? Yeah. Where, where, where are we? Right at the Family Golf Center. Okay. Right, right where it, it, all is parking. We'll meet here at noontime. Take a walk for lunch. Yeah. Get a better feel. Also, yeah. we get a better feel. We'll know what we're dealing with. Fair enough. Really see those guys too. Well, the planning board does all this really hands on. That's right. So, if you get pitched or something, we'll have to get those. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, are you more concerned about the, the wetlands being like stamped, uh, trampled on or whatever? Is that, is yeah, that in, in yeah. encroachment? So, uh, you'll see it tomorrow. Okay. Look, that, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So we can't go over Bill's updates, minutes, upcoming learning opportunities, and enjoy them. The only thing we lost is a drill. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys. See you later. So, that being said, anything else the board was to discuss mm -hmm. this evening? How is uh, the research going for a staff person? I will talk to Carol when she was out today. Okay. She's going to be in tomorrow. Yeah, no, just, just curious. Shayla, Shayla's been. They've got a couple of people they talk to, so I'll have maybe I'll have a thank you. I'll thank you. Thank you. Maybe I get a hold of Carol before we need a new time. I'll get a okay. quick update for you. Yeah, good. Thank you. So I'll move for I'll look for a motion to adjourn. I'll make it. Gordon moves. I second it. Edwin. So no discussion. All those in favor? All right. Unanimous. Right.